Brian and Kenzie in the morning and Chicago's alternative all day. Q101. Brian and Kenzie on Q101 and very stoked that Brian and Kenzie got to talk to Mike Shinoda of Lincoln Park. Very rare, very exclusive to Q101 in this show. And as we talked about the whole countdown a few weeks ago, of course, they laid it all out last Thursday where the band is... Continuing on with some changes, but obviously uh, with Emily Armstrong joining from Dead Sarah, uh, joining from that band and being in Lincoln Park now in the Chester Bennington role, for lack of a better other way to say that. Um, And they have shows coming up. No Chicago show yet. They have a new album, of course, dropping November 15th. We're going to play the new song, The Emptiness Machine, here in a second. But we talked to Mike Shinoda about a lot of different things, and he was so kind and generous and really wanting to talk. I feel like a band, you know, hasn't been around for seven years and basically opened up talking to him. Why now? Seven years since the tragic passing of Chester Bennington. You know, that's not like they waited a year and got it going. And uh, Mike Shinoda answered with this. I guess it goes back to about, I think I met Emily in 2019. Yeah, 2019. And a friend had just introduced us and she came by the studio and we like played around, like worked on a couple ideas a couple times. And then, you know, she struck me as like really talented and I really liked what we had made. But the songs we didn't make, we made weren't like, they weren't in, they weren't there yet. Like they weren't incredible. They were just, it was just, oh, she's good. And I started to get into like writing and producing with other people. So I was doing all these sessions with different artists and other writers and stuff. And I had met this guy, Colin Britton in a session. And I went, wow, that guy, like I really vibe with him. He's just, he's a really good um, producer and writer and he plays like every instrument. And those two things just like logged in the back of my mind like they were just like kind of in a folder and the uh, they weren't on the desktop they were just like tucked away somewhere (laughs) and um at one point a few years ago a couple a couple years ago joe and i had this conversation joe han our, our dj and i had this conversation about like what if what if we just like started like kind of hanging out more often like i made like the idea of auditioning people or hey let's get the band back together was not the start like that that felt really stupid to us to be honest like, <laughs> like that's so clumsy and like uh, unattractive and a way of approaching things like it's more for us it's more about like let's just get together and hang and joe and i started dave and joe and i started and eventually we started writing some things just playing around with the little weird ideas and inviting other people in and eventually brad came in but colin and emily were the ones that stuck like when we 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 recorded you know i should say when we recorded we wrote stuff with a lot of different people just to kind of feel it out and it evolved the album um from zero which comes out on November 15th. The album kind of evolved at the same time as the band lineup evolved. It just became, it blurred into existence in a way. Wow, that's an incredible explanation of, you know, how they got where they are now. That's Mike Shinoda of Linkin Park. And he mentions Colin in there. That's the new drummer because mm-hmm. Rob Borden has chosen not to continue on at this point. And it seems like it was pretty friendly. It's just a matter of fact that he was distancing himself from the band the last couple of years when Chester's been gone. And listen, you lose somebody like that, it affects you a lot of different ways. Not everybody wants to keep going. And Brad Delson, the guitar player, by the way, he's on this new song we'll play in a second here, The Emptiness Machine. But he's also not going to tour. He's going to play the music, and on the album, he wants to write and be creative with Linkin Park, but he doesn't want to be on the road anymore. And again, these guys are, you know, getting their, I'm not saying they're old, but they're in their mid-40s at this point, and they went through a, a, they went through a lot. They went through a lot. Touring is also really, really hard yeah. on your mental and your body. And a, there's a lot of artists, they, a lot of them don't admit it because it sounds very negative. People are excited to come see you on tour, so a lot of people won't talk about it. So many artists hate touring. It's yeah. their least favorite part of the gig. As much as they love seeing the fans and bringing their music plays, it's just, it is hard on you show after show, on the road, away from family, away from loved ones, very hard on your mental, hard on your body. You, you, people lose their voices, lose that, like a lot happens. A lot of people don't don't like it. And they, 
but they don't want to bring a negative energy to people spending all this money to come see them, so they don't always acknowledge that, which I totally understand, but it's tough on people. And he still wants to be in Lincoln Park, so he's still going to make the, make the music. He just doesn't want to go on tour anymore. So, um, And speaking of that, you know, the mental toll, Kenzie asked Mike Shinoda in our interview with him about Chester Bennington and the situation of emotionally moving on. Yeah, I mean, it's, I, I wanted to know what that was like for him. This Obviously, they took a long break, and I do think that was a respectful and good thing to do. But now this is his first time in Lincoln Park without Chester. That's really his first time hitting the stage without him. Obviously, he's done his solo stuff, but being in Lincoln Park, and I was very curious of... I'm sure there is happiness tied to this resurgence, but what other emotions are going on with that? Just to speak on the Chester thing, because it, you know, I want it, I want to be clear. Like I really, everybody, you know, they kind of have to say like things like Emily stepping into Chester's shoes and blah, blah, blah. Like, I, I don't love that phrasing because I get that she is filling a, a, a space in the, in the visual lineup of the band. But I also feel like Chester was one of a kind. He's only Chester. And Emily's also one of a kind. She's only Emily. Like when you, when I hear her sing, she doesn't sound like him to me. She sounds like her. And that's what I like. Like what I like about her voice is that it's very unique and it sounds, I don't know how else to explain it. Like when she sings on the songs, they sound like Linkin Park songs. That's just my gut. That's just how I feel. Right. You feel like she belongs, not because she's trying to be Chester, but you feel Emily belongs in Lincoln Park. I feel seen, Kenzie. <laughs> I, feel like you get, you feel, I feel like you get me. <laughs> that was a great moment in talking to him, man. He's, he, was, he was really nice, really gracious, really cool. Mike Shinoda of Lincoln Park, our conversation with him about everything that's gone on in the last week of them coming back with new music with a new singer, with some a few changes here and there. And I went back a little bit, actually, in part of the interview of, of course, my my nostalgia of the Sludge Nation days uh, back in the day. <laughs> but I remember playing Linkin Park the first time and, you know, being at Jamboree with 30,000 people only a year after people heard One Step Closer and how crazy it was. And I, I told Mike, you know, being here on Q101 in the afternoons, like 50,000 calls in the first month with how fast they rose about, that's so cool, we got a Chicago band. That's awesome, Lincoln Park. I wonder where they're from exactly in Lincoln Park because I lived in Lincoln Park at one point. <laughs> like people just calling, nope, okay, they're Lincoln Park, but they're not from Chicago over and over again, thousands of times had to say that. And here was his response to that when I brought up Chicago and Lincoln Park, their name. Americans like thought we were local everywhere we went, but especially <laughs> Chicago. Because there's yeah. a Lincoln Park everywhere. There's a <laughs> Lincoln Park in LA. There's a Lincoln Park in Florida. There's like, I mean, yeah. wherever you go, there's a Lincoln Park. But in Chicago, that's the most well known Lincoln Park. And so people out there just claimed us like we were their own. And I was like, why are they doing that? Oh, <laughs> because of the name. Um, and yeah, we had, we had from the very beginning, we had a really big fan base in Chicago. Um, and that big jump happened that year as well, where we were playing, you know, these, I mean, we were playing first of seven, right? We were opening the show with nobody in the seats. People were just walking in with their beers. <laughs> and that later on the same tour cycle, we headlined every single one of those shows. Um, yesterday's show actually was for as, it's funny because cameras like are so deceiving. Like yesterday's show looked really big on camera. It was actually only a thousand people. It's a very wow. small crowd. Um, so to be able to like, take that, take the set, the show that we've got, which by the way, the live, you know, this live stream show was 60 minutes ish. Our actual show is over two hours. So, you know, it's, I'm very, I mean, you know, I'm very excited to be on getting on the road with these songs. Um, Unfortunately, we can't play a bunch of the new ones yet because the record's not out, but I'm dying to play the new. I'm dying to play the new songs. Oh, our conversation with Mike Shinoda of Linkin Park. In case, is that entire interview up on our YouTube channel right now? That entire interview is up on the Q101 Chicago YouTube channel right now. And you can probably jump to a link from it, I think, on Facebook as well. That's right. He was so gracious, so nice, so awesome. And having Linkin Park back with new music again, November 15th. But we did world premiere this song for you last week. The Emptiness Machine. It is Linkin Park.
with Brian and Kenzie on Q101. Thanks to Mike Shinoda. Brian and Kenzie in the morning. And Chicago's alternative all day. Q101. Brian and Kenzie in the morning. And Chicago's alternative all day. Q101. Brian and Kenzie on Q101. And earlier today, we did a fact that made your brain go that September 9th, today, is the most common birthday day to have. So there's more people having birthdays today than any other time on earth in the world, in the year. So we add up the math, and it looks like it goes back to the holidays, and maybe you're getting a little busy, too much. Uh, what's the stuff you drink at holidays? Uh, the the uh, the punch, the uh, crap. Eggnog. Coquito. Uh, is that what it's called? That's like like Latin eggnog, kind of like Latin rum chata. It's very so, good. Oh, so what's, what, what's in that? It's very similar to rum chata recipe, but better. Like, like, <laughs> like, it's like coconut. It's had like three different kinds of like milks and creams in it. It's yeah. delicious. Yeah. A lot of cinnamon. It's awesome. Yeah. I just drink what I usually drink on the holidays. Like, I don't drink anything special, uh, but I know like a lot of people like that kind of stuff. I just mm. don't like the creamy alcohol. You know what I mean? You don't like creamy. Yeah, for alcohol. For ice cream, yes. Right. I was going to say, you're, fa- you're, you're addicted to ice cream. <laughs> I know. <laughs> like but I don't you like, bring it up. But I don't like alcohol like an ice cream. And I don't, so I don't like creaminess in my alcohol either. I do. <laughs> Clearly. I like, I like a little good, good, good creamy tap. Yeah. So you drink too much of that, and then some people had sex, and then nine months later a baby came, and that's why today's the biggest birthday day. If it's yours, I mean, I'm sure, you know, you were loved your whole life, and everything's fine, and you were intended. I'm trying to make it sound like you were an accident. Well, that's what it sounds like. Now, I'm curious because I don't drink alcohol. Would you drink eggnog and then sleep with somebody? Those feel like <laughs> non sequiturs. Like you wouldn't do one and then the other. What? Eggnog wouldn't get me in the mood, I don't think. Why don't you try it? All right, let's find out. Let's get yeah. hammered. So why, why not? Because it's creamy? Is that why you're saying that? Or are you just, like, do you think like shots get you in the mood to go have yeah, sex? Yeah, I don't know. Again, I've never had eggnog, but it looks nasty. Well, you were the way Kenzie described it, her, how it makes her feel, so it's a well, good... Well, she, but she makes but, everything sound fun. I know. Yeah. <laughs> well, Kito doesn't have whatever that, like, ta- like whatever the, the egg and the eggnog is to get more of a rum chata, which I suppose you haven't had case because you don't drink any alcohol. No. It's really I don't even creamy. know the word you're saying, quite honestly. <laughs> Which one? Coquito or rum chata? Both. Okay. Yeah. Got it. So. Is rum rum chata? Yeah. No, no, rum is rum. Is but it rum two chata. words or one word? Rum chata is one word. Yeah. Yeah. But it's got rum in it, so yeah. it's like a rum. Like it's like a creamy rum drink. It's it's literally very, it's a creamy cinnamon. It's delightful. You have to have it. Can you get a version, a version of that? Can you like, get a virgin? So, a virgin without, without the alcohol? Honestly, I would say horchata is basically rum Same. chata. Like, horchata is a Latin drink. It yeah. is very creamy, cinnamon. It's delicious. They have that at the farmer's market. I know yes. all about that. So if you get that, that's very similar to what rum chata is with rum. Maybe that's why they named it that. Now I'm thinking about <laughs> it. I've never, I've never said both names so in tandem. Well, Brooke just checked in and said, Brian, how about a bushwhacker? I don't know what a bushwhacker is as far as a drink. Sounds fun, though. I mean, they were wrestlers. I know that. Oh, that's um, right. They were. The both, bush- both of them have passed away. Rest in peace. Oh. Okay, so. Have you ever had a pink squirrel? Speaking of ice cream drinks. <laughs> <laughs> no, I've never had a pink squirrel. <laughs> My grandma used to get wasted playing poker on pink squirrels, and she'd laugh like, like oh. you could hear squealing in the other room. Well, that sounds fun. Pink squirrels are, it's like more of like a, like a, like a, like a sherbet. You know, it's yeah. very good. So the Bushwhacker is a, let's see, it's similar to a creamy chocolate pina colada. So it has vodka, Kahlua, dark creme de coco, uh, <laughs> and then Coco Lopez, which is cream of chocolate, a splash of triple sec, and milk that's spun in a blender and topped with um, fresh nutmeg. I don't want that. I, I really don't want that. I uh, I mean, I appreciate the thought that I might like a Bushwhacker. Uh, I mean, I'll take I a, drink it. You, yeah, you'd li- yeah, you'd like that. I like, I want a little, I like stuff that's fun. <laughs> I like fun drinks. But see, when you drink enough Miller Lights, that's fun. <laughs> <laughs> have you guys ever had, have you ever had a um, French toast crunch shot? No. That's when they take like a rum shot and they put fireball in it because it's like the cinnamon. Ah. Uh. Let me tell you something. In Florida, we had those at the work Christmas party. <laughs> That's why there's no Christmas parties anymore. I know. Because <laughs> everybody gets too wasted and hooks up with their coworkers. It was not good. It's the first time I ever experienced memory loss while drinking and, like, was at home, like, 
huh, when I woke up the next day. And then I looked it up, and Fireball has is one of, like, the alcohol is completely associated with forgetting stuff. <laughs> and I have not touched it since. Uh, like, well, that's not good. Yeah, that's in their commercials. You think they should write that? Like, that should be part of the bottle. Like, may not remember is, like, not good. See what you miss out by not drinking, Case? I know. It sounds like I'm really missing out on a lot. <laughs> Accidental children and memory loss. <laughs> Other things happen, too, that are fine. <laughs> Well, happy birthday, because September 9th, the most birthdays, the most common birthday day. So happy birthday if you're out there and it's yours. Brian and Kenzie, Q101. The Brian and Kenzie Show. On Q101. It's Brian and Kenzie on Q101. And Lauren's coming in, so at noon, Lauren will have another chance for you to get into the Offspring pop-up next week, next Thursday. Uh, so noon... 5 p.m. with Brian Phillips and at 8 p.m. So three more chances today, and we'll have another chance tomorrow morning at 8 a.m. right here with the show. So uh, make sure you keep listening. It's the only way to get into this free pop-up with the offspring that 20 or 30,000 people would line up for normally if it was a free pop-up, but the Metro holds about uh, 975 people. So, uh, no, you have to win to get in. So, Case, on the takeaways, what do you got? Eric in Downers Grove checked in his takeaway. Brian gets chills when big men cry. I really do. Big dogs, as I call them. Big dogs. Big dogs. Naturally. Yeah. Gorillas. Juice heads. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> it's Gorilla Central outside. Oh, yeah. Get out to here. Quote, to quote the amazing J-Wo. <laughs> <laughs> what do you got, Kenzie? Uh, 708, if you were born today, sorry you were in accident. That's right. <laughs> related to Not that. Not true, necessarily. <laughs> yeah, related, 708 says, uh, take away alcohol, because who doesn't need memory loss and unwanted children? Whew. Yeah. Take that, take that case. Go to the podcast from that one. Yeah, yeah, on the Brian and Kenzie podcast today, <laughs> you can hear all about how you were a mistake. About how uh, <laughs> we had to pour one out for Waffle House. Kinsey thinks uh, Popeyes is fine dining. And, of course, <laughs> our exclusive conversation with Mike Shinoda, where he talks about getting Lincoln Park back together. All of the information you need, all the questions you might have had, are answered in that exclusive Brian and Kinsey interview. The full one is at Q101's YouTube channel. But we have the uh, abridged version on the Brian and Kinsey podcast today. That's right. Uh, anywhere you get your podcasts, go to Q101.com, Apple, Spotify. And uh, one more time before we leave today, go Bears! How about that victory yesterday? I don't care what the offense did. The defense kicked ass. Go Bears! The Stonehouse with oh. pressure! A block! It's scooped up by the Bears! Back the other way, Jonathan Owens, touchdown Chicago. Here it comes, straight blitz pick, Owen Spears, but that gets knocked away from Levis by Daryl Taylor. Loose ball, and out of the pack, it looked like Edwards recovered it. It is Chicago ball inside the Tennessee 35. In the face! In the face! Six. Here they come. Gordon's coming. Levis gets wrapped oh, up. No. Flake to the head. It's picked off. Tyreek Stevenson will give the Bears the lead on another defensive play. They need to get to midfield. Levis off the back foot. Floats it up for Boyd. It is picked off. Jalen Johnson seals the deal. And the defense wins the day for Chicago. The Bears. Brian and Kenzie in the morning and Chicago's alternative all day. Q101.